four, ayah number forty-one. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَكَيْفَ إِذَا جِئْنَا مِنْ كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ بِشَهِيدٍ How will it be? What will the situation be? When we will bring a witness from every community, وَجِئْنَا بِكَ عَلَى هَؤُلَى شَهِيدًا And we will bring you, meaning the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as a witness over all of them. So one time Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is narrated by Imam Bukhari and Muslim and others. Yeah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one time said to Sayyidina Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu anhu. Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, one of the closest of the Sahaba to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam praised him on many occasions. He was someone who was very dublabla, he was very skinny due to a number of different things in addition to poverty he was very lean so one time the Sahaba noticed how skinny he was and he kind of smirked or made a gesture made some type of comment about how skinny this person is how skinny his legs are, his shins are and the Sahaba they did not mean anything very harsh against him, but the Rasul when he heard about this, he said to them that you guys think this is somewhat awkward or a little bit funny, right? I will have you know that these legs of Abdullah bin Masood, which in this world seem very weak or seem very thin or lean, they are heavier than the mountain of Prophet in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's known as Sahib al one of the people who would prepare the materials for Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his wudu water, his sandals, his miswak. So he would be one of the people to carry the sandals. This is a name given to him, Sahib al And he's one of the people who was also those trained by Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to give fatwa and ijtihad. He is one of the Abdullahs. There is Abdullah bin Masood, Abdullah bin Abbas, Abdullah bin Umar, Abdullah bin Amr ibn Abbas. A number of Sahaba all named Abdullah. He's <coughs> in that category. Great, great Sahabi of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. One of the things that we specifically inherit from him is the pronunciation of the majority of the Ummah today of the Quran, the text of the Quran. It goes back to Imam Hafs bin Asim and that transmission of the way that we recite the Quran, the specific rules of mad and tajweed and pausing and others, goes back to the recitation of Tirat of Abdullah bin Masood and Ali radiallahu anhu. So he's great Sahabi of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was sent to Kufa during the time of Amir al-Mu'mineen, Amar al-Mu'mineen, radiallahu anhu, and Ali radiallahu anhu eventually, uh, sometime later, he becomes the Khalifa Amir al-Mu'mineen. He relocates to Kufa, he gets to Kufa, and he notices that may Allah have mercy on Abdullah bin Masood radiallahu anhu. He has filled his city with knowledge. So great, great companion of Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This narration and this incident from the seerah of the life of Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam, in which this ayah plays a role. Abdullah bin Masood radiallahu anhu is narrating that the Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to me. Recite the Quran to me. So, <coughs> subhanAllah, one of any of our teachers, right, this isn't like it's class. This is a very, very different scenario. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is not testing him to see if his memorization is correct. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is making this request to him. Why? Because he loves listening to the Quran being recited from somebody else other than him. Even though he is Sahib al Wahid, even though he is the one who is receiving the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no one else at that time, other than the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, receives Wahid. He's the one who Allah has chosen. So Abdullah bin Masood radiallahu anhu, he says, Qul Ya Rasulullah, Aqra'u alayka wa alayka unzil. You want me to read to you when you are the one who receives it? That's very honorable, that's very overwhelming and intimidating perhaps. He said that I like to listen to other people recite it. Right? He is 
the one who teaches all of them, but he also loves listening to others when they recite it. And he wants Abdullah bin Masood at this moment to recite it to him. So the narration continues, فَقَرَتُ عَلَيْهِ سُورَةَ النِّسَاء So I began to read for the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Surah An-Nisa. So he was reading Surah An-Nisa, the surah that we was chose this ayah from. Hatta jitu ila hadil ayah until I reached this verse. فَكَيْفَ إِذَا جِئْنَا مِنْ كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ بِشَهِيدٍ وَجِئْنَا بِكَ عَلَى هَأُولَاءِ شَهِيدًا Ayah number 41 of Surah Nisa, how will it be then when we bring from each nation an ummah, a witness, and we bring you as a witness over them? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when Abdullah recited this ayah, I'm sure he must have been reciting with a lot of people trying to perform for the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, recited nicely because the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is listening. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Hasbuk Allah. Okay, that's enough. Bas. Hasbuk Allah, that's enough for now. Falta Fattu Ilay. I quickly checked to see everything is okay. I just looked towards his direction. Fa'idha Aina Mutadri. I noticed that his eyes were shedding tears. Why was the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam emotional at this moment? We have to put ourselves in the position of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What was his worry? What was his concern? What was his fikr? First and foremost, one thing to appreciate is like a specific lesson that the Fasirun have extracted from this incident. When you are informed, when we know that there is some particular good deed, something that is permissible, and jayis in the sharia, makes somebody else's heart happy then if that is your intention, that's not considered showing off, and that's not considered riya. Okay. Genuinely something like reciting Quran, Tilawat, it makes somebody feel better. Right here, we're talking about the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam making this request. Genuinely, it makes them happier. Then for you to fulfill that request, okay, if your intention is that you want to make this person happy, right, this is not something that falls into the category of showing off or riya. We have to make sure we check our intentions. That being said, <coughs> I mean, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was al-amin al sadiq He was the most truthful person. He was the most reliable and trustworthy person. Even the enemies of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they testified to this. They knew that he was not lying. They knew that he was speaking the truth. They attributed it to other things. First and foremost, it's their own jahiliyyah and then they claimed that he was mad, they claimed that he may be power hungry, or they claimed so many other things. Nobody really ever claimed that he was lying. Why? Because his entire life was about amana and sin. He was reliable, he was a person of trust, and he was a person of honesty and truthfulness. And the Prophet ﷺ time and time again, time and time again, especially near the end of his life, when we hear how the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is confirming with the Sahaba radiallahu anhu. Right? We look at the sermon that he gave at the time of the farewell hajj. Right? At the end of it, after he gives his khutbah on the day of Arafah, during the hajj, right? what does he say? Allahumma li bali al-shahidu al-ghaiba. Those who are here should take this message and reminder to those who are not here. He is not right now today, but probably until the end of time. And he asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be a witness. After he asked all of them, did I deliver this message to you? This is the largest gathering of the Sahaba radiallahu ever. During the life of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa He asked all of them to confirm at that time, did I do my job? And what is this job? This is calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And all of them said, yes. We will all confirm on the day of judgment that you did your job. You delivered this message to us. And now that responsibility of delivering the message has come on us, right? But in this ayah of the Quran, that had been previously revealed to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but now he's hearing it from Abdullah bin Masood radiallahu anhu. The Mufassirun, they say about this ayah, it can mean a couple of things. 
First and foremost, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah's messenger, he will be a witness on the day of judgment. He will be a witness on the day of judgment. And not just him, all of the previous prophets of Allah, they will be a witness for their ummahs as well. So whoever follows Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam, whoever, followed, whoever was there at the time of Musa alayhi salam, Bani Israel, all of the different prophets to whom, wherever they were sent to, those ummah, their prophet will be brought. And that prophet, that Nabi alayhi salam, will act as a witness. The prophets, these are the chosen people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A handful of their stories are in the Quran. On that day, everybody will be given their judgment by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in this entire testimony, they will be brought as a witness. Who will be brought to confirm whether or not you actually obeyed, you actually submitted, you actually listened to your messenger's call, alayhi salam. Right? The messenger himself will be brought. The Prophet of Allah himself will be brought. Okay, then on top of that, who confirms that these witnesses themselves are reliable? So all of the people, all of the different ummah, all of the different nations of the past, each one's prophet will be made to give witness either in favor of or against, may Allah protect us, the people of their time, the people whom he was sent to. But then, okay, how do we verify that these witnesses themselves are reliable? They will bring <coughs> the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is Khatam al nabiyyin One of the things that Allah say, this verse itself, this ayah itself is also a proof of Khatam al-Nabiyyin. That there cannot be another prophet after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why? Because otherwise this meaning does not make sense. This interpretation does not make sense. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he will be the witness of all of the witnesses. He will be the prophet of Allah alayhi salam, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to confirm in front of everybody on the day of judgment that all of these other prophets before him, they are all speaking the truth. Right? And then there's no more objection, there's no more argument after that. Another way the Mufassirun have interpreted this is that, referring to this ummah as well, all of the previous prophets, they will have to give witness regarding their ummah and our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will have to give witness regarding us even though we are not alive at the same time as him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam there are many authentic narrations that speak about how he is informed at times, in different ways by the angels, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about what the Ummah is doing, right? specifically with regards to our Salat and Salat al Sharif, right, and certain other things as well. I want to ask myself and I want us to think of what would our answer be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were come to my house today, if the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would join us for iftar one day, how well, magical and how amazing and subhanAllah beautiful would that be, but if the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were to see right, the amount of deen in my life, the amount of sunnah in my life, the amount of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in my life and my family, like my level of iman, my love for the masjid, my love for salah, what would he say about us on the day of judgment? What will he say? We need him on our side, right? right? Those of us who have ever been involved in legal proceedings, right? The witnesses are very, very important, if not the most important part of the entire trial. If you don't have support from your witnesses, someone to back up your claim, back up your position, then the verdict and the judgment may not necessarily be in your favor. The stronger the witness, the stronger your case is. So how do we secure a good testimony, a good witness from the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when the Messenger وسلم, heard this, right, he became emotional. Not only will he have to speak the truth like he always did, but part of that means that maybe there are some people who the Prophet may Allah protect us, may not be able to say, may not say favorable things, may not say positive things about us in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What will it be like? This is a reminder for us, this is a reminder for the Quraysh of Makkah Mukarramah that okay, everything that you guys are doing to him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the believers, everything that he is teaching you and you are following him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, all of it, he will be asked about it. He will be asked about it. Okay? 
I gave you this job. They all confirmed that you did your job. Okay, then, did you do your job or not? Right? This is the witness. This is the proof. And so Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this is his Rahman, this is his mercy. He is listening to this ayah that he had previously really received from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala himself, but this worry and concern, what's going to happen to my Ummah, this affected him. And so I make dua, I request us all to think about during this month, think about beyond this month, right? what is our relationship with the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, specifically with regards to his sunnah, his sacrifice for the deen, his efforts, all of the things that he was worried about, are we worried about those same things? All of the things that he loved, do we love those same things? He loved the salah, he loved spending time with his family, he loved smelling nice and perfume, he loved taking care of people, helping people. These are all things that are in front of us. Right? When we study the seerah, when we study the life of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa he was a helpful person. And I a helpful person, am I someone who serves the people? All of that being said, on the Day of Judgment, we need Him to be on our side. We need Him to be on our side. The commands of the Quran are also very clear. We have to be people who are witnesses and speak the truth and stand up for justice. On that day, there will be no other justice other than the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to ask anybody else for confirmation as to what really happened while we were here in this world, he doesn't need to, and he will not ask anybody else other than the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So I make dua. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala us to increase in our love for the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allow us to increase in the love for his book, the words of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Literally, the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He heard Abdullah bin Masood recite this, and he started to cry. He started to cry. Right? When we think about all of the things that Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went through, the book. The sacrifice, the journey, the hijrah, the mission, the da'wah, the bu'ah. What was his priority? What was he thinking about? He put us first. He put us first. He put the ummah, he put the people of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah first on his list of priorities. Where is he? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on our list of priorities. And on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make him the witness to try our case. We make dua for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Give us all so much love, peace, so much love. Amen.